Welcome to the Benzo Free Podcast, your home for an honest, straightforward, and personal discussion about anti-anxiety drugs, their effects, and how to deal with dependence and withdrawal. Whether you have taken benzodiazepines, Z drugs, or any other tranquilizers, know someone who has, or you just want help dealing with chronic anxiety and insomnia, this is your podcast. I'm your host, D.E. Foster, author of the book, Benzo Free, The World of Anti-Anxiety Drugs and the Reality of Withdrawal. I'm so glad you joined us today. Please stick around and let me bend your ear for a few minutes. You just might feel a little better on the other side. Hello there, this is D, and welcome to episode 125 of the Benzo Free Podcast. This is take two of this recording. Um, I was doing a little bit of different, something different this weekend, and I'll get into that in a second, but um, I was just sitting down to record in this morning, and I was sitting out here on my patio and just having a great old time and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And talking. And I thought, hey, that's not bad. I, I was going to record like a five-minute intro, and I wound up recording a hour and six-minute podcast. And took it downstairs and pulled it up to edit it and found out I had nothing because I didn't turn a certain switch on my digital recorder, <laughs> which is frustrating, but it's a good lesson, and it's a good lesson to learn um, for myself, and I know for all of us that things don't always go well and how you deal with those things not going well is essential and i think it makes a big difference in how we approach life and i could have let that ruin my day i could have um just gone off and done something else and not come back to it all kinds of things but it's not the first time this has happened to me (laughs) and i did check my levels this time to make sure it's recording but I approach it more like that must have been my um, rough, not rough draft, but um, dress rehearsal. That's what my wife, Shanna, just said. She said, consider that your dress rehearsal. And it's like, yep, that's what I do sometimes. That was my dress rehearsal. And now I'm really recording. (laughs) So (laughs) anyway, it's Sunday here and I'm on the patio at my house enjoying an overcast day. I love overcast day. I'm I mentioned a few times I'm a ginger and I have um, red hair and very fair skin and I burn easily and I actually don't mind days when it's a little nicer outside, a little cooler and I do better in in cloudier weather sometimes. So I'm just sitting here on my, on the sofa, on my patio, feet up on top of the table, here in the, the creek in the background, a roar by, it's actually an irrigation canal that we back to. Um, but it's got all this rocks, you know, in the base of it, and it's got like a little waterfall near us, so we get this sound of running water in the summertime. Uh, in the winter, it's totally dry because it's just irrigation, but in the summer, it's really a pretty sound. And I just wanted to get out of the basement and get um, outside and do something different. So, so today, um, I hope you will join me on the porch. This is my Sunday morning on the porch recording. I'm just making that up now. We'll call it that. And um, I was gonna, I was writing up a script, been working on it for about a week, not having a lot of success. Sometimes I just get writer's block, I get idea block, or I just don't get the motivation, and it wasn't working. And sometimes when I do that, I decide to just start recording or just press record. I think I called it one time, just press record. And I'm doing a just press record recording this morning, which means. I'm not planning on editing this, um, and I'm not planning on even pausing it. I might pause it and go to a different time, but right now, I'm just going to talk. And maybe I'll go do some Q&A, some questions from you all, or maybe I'll just keep going. This morning, I recorded 66 minutes straight, and um, (laughs) when I was planned on recording a few minutes on my intro, and um, I don't know, I'm kind of in that mindset of doing that again, so... So that's what's going on. So let me catch you up on some things. So this is, if you're used to the podcast, think of this as a really long, drawn-out intro where D kind of goes off on a couple different subjects, catches you up, talks about some correspondence he may have had with all of you and some other issues and that kind of thing. 
So anyway, but, you know, I want to start this one off really quickly with um, the correspondence issue. And the reason I say that is I've been delinquent. Um, I've gotten way behind, and this is a topic I've kind of dreaded covering, but I want to cover it real quick, and I'm going to try to cover it real quick. I often say real quick. I don't mean that, but it's okay. To let you know that I am probably two and a half months behind on responding to emails right now and to correspondence and I may not get to them all or get them back um, they've just become too much for me to handle and this is I've been responding to every comment feedback form email I've received for almost four years now over four years now and finally this is the first time I mean it's it's been getting longer. I've been like a week behind, then two weeks behind, then a month behind. Now I'm two and a half months behind, and I realize I just can't keep up. That doesn't mean I'm not going to keep responding to correspondence. I'm going to keep doing that on different platforms, especially those who are on the website. And when we do chats there and when we do um, all that kind of stuff, building the community out, I'm going to try to spend more time there communicating and talking to everybody. Um, but it just means I might not be able to get back to everybody else who reaches me out and different reaches out to me in different ways but and this is a big but um, I want to just say please don't stop emailing feed giving me feedback commenting on YouTube commenting on our posts especially on the website and stuff that stuff helps a lot um, also other people see it and they love your input and questions and I will keep looking for it I still will look at all emails I get I will still try to read all of them I'm not saying I'm not seeing them. I just may not have the time to respond to all of them. And I hope that's okay, and I hope you all understand that. I'm just doing my best. But right now, building this online community, which I'll get to, all the work with the Benzo Work Group, with the training program we got up and running there, which I'll get to, <laughs> and, um, and, of course, the research teams and, and launching the buying paper and all this stuff going on um, takes a lot of time. And I've, um, and unfortunately, it also takes me away from correspondence. And I don't want to give up on the correspondence because that is the heart of this. It always will be. And I'm hoping to have more people on my team that can help me respond to correspondence. Um, but right now, it's just hard for me to keep up. So I just want you all to know absolutely, this is never a personal thing. This is a global thing for me. I just haven't been able to keep up. Also, I still have ongoing email problems and some of my responses, I realize, have not been getting through to you. Um, especially if you're on Gmail. That's been a really pro big problem and I'm trying to resolve that. Um, but I wanted to get that done and upfront and let you know, please, please keep sending in your comments. Please send me feedback. I do see them. They are hugely valuable to me. I just may not always be able to respond to everyone. Um, and I, I thank you for being the heart and soul of this podcast, of this channel, of this website. And I am very grateful. Um, and um, that's what I wanted to say. That being said, let's move forward. What have I been doing? Well, um, one of the things I'm doing right now is the big part is easing anxiety. I'm building out that back-end community, the community. That's our online EA community, easing anxiety community. And this is the online portal. This will be a paid membership site. I have mentioned this before. This is not new. Right now, it's totally free. So if you want to sign up and come and, you know, click on log in and become a member on our site, there's nothing there to see. <laughs> but you can build your profile. You can build your own page and that kind of stuff. But within a couple of weeks, there's going to start being stuff. And only if you're logged in are you going to start to see it. The good news is this is all free right now. Okay, well, this will be a paid site. But right now it's completely free. Because as I'm providing some content and stuff like that, I don't want to start charging anybody until there's really things here to pay for. And I need to build that out. Um, I would never ask anybody to pay for something that wasn't, you know, there. But... Um, as we build it out, then at one point we will go to a paid site, but everybody will be notified. Nobody will automatically be charged anything. Don't worry. Then it will be your choice whether or not you want to sign up and be part of that. Okay. Um, that's how that's going to roll out. So that's exciting and happening. And I want to let you all know that um, I'm working with a team of people, especially one particular person 
um, and I'm going to announce it here for the first time ever. <laughs> but And um, right after I post this, I will also put out her introduction blog, and so she will tell you. But the newest member, actually the first team member outside of yours truly, um, who's a member of the Easing Anxiety team, is Doreen Shervin. And some of you are going to recognize her name, some of you won't. Um, but actually, she is on the board of the Alliance for Benzodiazepine Best Practices. She has lived experience. She has her doctorate in public health administration. So, and she's retired from that right now. Um, she and I have been meeting for two and a half months and building out this community that we're, we're setting up. It's really exciting. I can't wait to get this stuff up and running so you all can start to see what we're talking about. But She's amazing. I am so happy to have her on my team and um, and creating this whole thing together. So she's been really solid. And um, shortly you'll see a blog post that will introduce her. I hope you will be looking for that. And she also is going to start writing some blogs um, on our site. So you'll be seeing some some, you know, some blogs on our site from her and she won't be she won't be the last there will be other members of this team I'm building out which I've already been talking to some people and um, and some of them will also be writing and maybe we'll have some guest writers from other places I'm hoping to have people write and also maybe do podcasts maybe do live events I mean definitely do live events we got those coming up so there's a lot happening on happening and a lot of that's going to happen on the community portal on our site so if you're signed up you're gonna see that um, as we announce it we'll announce it on the blog so if you want to be up to date with the things we're doing here please go to our website easinganxiety.com slash subscribe and subscribe the first thing to do is subscribe to our email list okay now once you do that you can also then log in and create your own account I hope you do that too but definitely subscribe to the email list all that does is updates you whenever we have new things happening or coming out or blog posts or podcasts stuff like that so that's where that is so anyway we're doing a lot of work there's a lot coming out we got some really good ideas we're just not I'm not gonna spread them out too much until I'm not gonna share them too much until we start launching them um, but if you really want to be notified when these things come out please subscribe to our mailing list and log in and create an account and you will start seeing that stuff. The podcast is still going. It's not going anywhere. Um, I'm still doing this once a month. Last month was our roundtable for Bind. And so that I considered my podcast last month. This month is back to a podcast of me talking, as you hear me now. And um, what else was I going to say? I've got a lot of things to talk about, but I just wanted to get the administrative stuff, you know, the easing anxiety stuff out of the way, and then we'll get to more personal things. And and struggles and stuff like that but I wanted to let you know so if you want to know more information please subscribe to our email list you'll find out more you know all that I love it thank you and you know what right now since this is all off the cuff I'm just gonna say please remember that the benzo free po um, bleh, the benzo free podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical advice I always want to stick that in there and at the end I'll play our whole disclaimer so you can get that but I just want to make sure I get that part out there if you want to know more about what we do, please visit our website at easinganxiety.com. That's the place to go. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is at easinganx. So, and that's also our Twitter handle, at easinganx, if you want to follow us on Twitter, too. So we also have a Facebook page, but it's at easinganxfb. I couldn't get the other one there. Anyway, so that's where we're at right now. Okay, next thing up. Um, my health. Uh, I know people have asked about this and I like to take, I've, I've stretched myself too thin. I was just talking to a good friend from the podcast, Wendy, um, just writing back to her. She wrote back to me and she said, I thought you were going to slow down and take care of yourself. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Wendy looks out for me. Wendy's pretty amazing. She's been a supporter of the podcast for a long, long time and love her to death and so she you know she reminds me um to and i am i am slowing down a little bit in fact i'm i'm working with doreen and some other people right now to kind of figure out how to schedule this out so i don't overdo too much in fact doreen even reminded me last week to try not to take on too much um so i'm doing that but my symptoms do still kick in when i get stressed um i still have throat tightenings come back my dysphagia swallowing has gotten a little better that's good news 
Um, I still got the tinnitus, the pulsatile tinnitus in my right ear. Um, still have some achesia right now and some insomnia going on. Nothing really severe, but enough to be annoyances. You know how it is. And I still believe a lot of that is due not just to benzos and bind, but also due to um, my long COVID. And the more I study on that, the more I see that some of these symptoms are tied to that directly. So, um, But I just wanted to update you that I'm still struggling with that sometimes. Still, it frustrates me sometimes, but all in all, I deal with it okay. And it's, it's in more of an annoyance than it is a real severe um, types of symptoms. This month, on the 20th of August, I will, yours truly will be officially nine years benzo-free. I'm excited about that, and I'm doing really good. Even though I mentioned my symptoms briefly, I want you all to know that I'm doing good. And I like life, I love life, I'm happy, and I'm struggling with a few things, but who isn't? Um, but they'll, they'll subside, and they, they, they get easier, and I learn to deal with them better. And that's okay. It's all good. It's all good. But I wanted to share that with you. You know, it's been crazy around here. And I'm not just saying that because a lot is going on, but um, a lot is going on. And I think how we manage the crazy in our life is important. I really do. I've been struggling with this lately because there's so much I want to do every weekend, every week. Um, here I am on a Sunday recording my podcast. I'll be spending the rest of the day editing it and writing up all the different materials and posting it on the different sites, and, and there goes my Sunday. And that doesn't flow very well with the whole topic of taking it easier, but I just want to get the podcast done and out and get back to things, um, back to the other work of getting the community up and running. But we all get, we all get like that. We all get those times. We all get overwhelmed. Such a significant piece of bind is overwhelmed. And we've talked about that a few times here, and I see it all the time. But it takes me back a little bit, and I was just downstairs when I was getting ready to edit my first recording from this morning, which, of course, didn't record. And I saw a little alert come in from the website. And somebody had commented on a post, T was this person's name, and asked just getting ready to start their benzo journey and was scared. Now I can share this because it was posted on a post, which means it's public. You know, anything commented on a post or commented on YouTube, of course, is automatically public because they just go out public. Um, of course, if you send something through the feedback form or email to me and you mark it as private, it stays private. I think you all know that. You can choose on the feedback form if you want it public or private. But I just, I, I, I felt for this person. Um, and I, I say this person because I don't remember if I saw in there whether male, female, or something. I, I don't know, you know, the gender. And so I'm just not, I'm trying to be, I don't know. And so um, I don't remember when I saw it on there. But it gets me and it hits me every time, especially people that are just starting out and looking at this and trying to flash back to how I was at that point, what that was like. It was daunting. It was overwhelming. And I always want to try to stay connected. I, I've mentioned before as to one of the things that gets me through, I think we all tell ourselves stories that helps us get through, but one of the things that gets me through is the story that I still have symptoms for a reason. I still have symptoms for a reason. I tell myself that. I, I believe it, actually. But I also realize it's a story I tell myself to make it okay that I still have symptoms from benzodiazepines nine years later. But the part of me, and that's the faith part of me, believes I couldn't do this job that I'm doing, which means communicating with you, connecting with you, helping you all through the struggles you're doing, if I didn't still have a taste of what I went through and what I'm still going through. So if I don't still have some bad days, if I don't still have some symptoms, then I start to get a little out of touch with what this really is. And I don't, maybe that's why I still have symptoms. And if that's the reason, 
I'm okay with that. I really am okay with that. And that belief of why it is, whether it's real or not, but I kind of, I, I feel like it is. I have enough faith that I believe there's definitely a power in this universe greater than I am. I refer to that power as God. Some people might refer to it elsewhere, elsewhere and I, I'm not making judgments here regardless. You know that I don't do that. Um, but that there's a reason why I am still going through what I am. And it's a good thing. And, and when I got T's comment today, it kind of reminded me of, you know, it takes me back to what was it like early on? And the fact that I still have symptoms, I can still relate somewhat to what this person's going through. And I can't imagine what it is at the very beginning, that fear that you have when you are first starting out. And I just want to talk to all of you that are in that state. Maybe you just found out benzodiazepines may be causing problems and you're freaking out. My God, I was there. I had an all-out panic attack. And I'd never had panic attacks before. I had an all-out panic attack when I first found out what might have happened to me. And I read the horror stories online. It took me six months until my doctor felt that I was stable enough to start to taper. Smartest thing uh, my doctor ever suggested was for me to wait until I was more stable. And I got more stable. I took care of that. I made sure I was stable enough to start it. And I, I did. But that fear, that unknown is so overwhelming. And I'm just really hoping that through the podcast, through all the people out there, the community support, all these different things that weren't there when I started. When I started tapering over 10 years ago, um, I had the Ashton Manual. There were a few sites. Baylissa, I think, was working. Baylissa's always working hard. I think Jennifer Lee might have been out there. Um, um, Geraldine had her podcast. Benzo Buddies was there, of course. Benzo Buddies was a place to go to. Um, Shane Kenny's movie, um, great movie out there on the benzodiazepine disaster was great. Some great things. Malcolm later had done some research. Um, and, you know, those kinds of things were there, but there weren't these huge community organizations. And, I, and maybe BIC and Alliance had already been formed. I think it was about that time they were coming on. Um, but now there's so much more. And this community is thriving now. Unfortunately, it's thriving because there's need. There's need of people recovering from benzodiazepines. But... It's thriving, and it's so much more going on here. And, and I want to reach out to T and, and, and let T know that there's a lot of help here. You're going to get through this. You're going to make this. You got this. And partly because there are so many people now to help you. You have my podcast. You're welcome. You can go check out my book. You can check out everybody else's books. You can go check out all the different resources, coaching, online discussion groups. These things, they weren't there before. And we know so much more about the drugs. We just discovered BIND and this difference between acute withdrawal and this protracted state. We knew there was a protracted state, but we didn't really understand where that dividing line was and what the different symptoms were. We, we understand that now, and we're learning more about that. There's so much hope for us going through that. There are some drugs on the forefront. We're, we're still looking at flumazenil to see if it might be an effective treatment for, for withdrawal. We're still looking at some other things, too. Um, I was just introduced to another drug by a doctor that I was talking to um, on email the other day. And there's, these things are going on. And so we're, we're, we're constantly learning, and we're sharing it with the community, and we, we're helping each other. There's, there's so much optimism right now because of all that support. I know that's so hard to see when you're in the middle of it or when you're at the beginning of it. But there's a lot out there to help you. You know, one of the things that, you know, one of my good good friends, Graham, actually piped in right after T wrote, wrote this comment. And Graham answered with a few things on the comment. This is all on the website. If you want to go to our, you know, website and view, I think it was the last post or two. I don't remember which post it was on. But it was a comment on one of the posts on there. And, um, and Graham, Graham's great. Graham's another one of those people that's been with me for a long time. And um, keeps me honest, <laughs> really great support, and I just want to say thank you. Um, you're going to be seeing more of him, too, um, as we start developing out teams and structures and everything. But 
and he also piped in and said, you know, find a good doctor. Amen. I think he had some really good points. And he even suggested read my book, which I think is a little outdated. I got to admit, I wrote it. It was published in 2018, but I think it's still solid advice. And I hope it would be very helpful to people. Um, but also support team, he mentioned. And support team is so important. And I commented back on Graham's comment. And and I'm always trying to, you know, get that feedback. Even though I've not been great at responding to the emails, I am trying to respond to these direct comments and to these direct things through the website because that's where my focus is starting to be is on this online community we're building. Um, but it's just, there's there's so much going on. And I'm seeing it now. It's like just all this support is amazing out there and I'm, I'm loving it. And that's one of the things I love about this community is what you're never going to see from me is, well, I don't want to say never, I hate that word. But what I try not to be, and I don't think I am, is competitive. I am not competitive in this. This is not about my site winning out after somebody else's site or my coaching winning out after somebody else. You know, this is not what this is about. Um, yes, we will start with the online community doing some coaching. We're going to do some groups. We're going to do some chats and live streams and forums. And I mean, we're building this stuff in. It's pretty cool. But I'm not doing this at all as a competition. And that's what I love about this community is I'm... I want to say, if you come to me and say, I'm starting out on benzos and I don't know where to go, I'm going to start asking you some questions. What are you looking for? What's the personality type? What, do you, what are your beliefs? What are your values? What, you know? And let's try to find the help. And maybe the help is at our site. Maybe it's not. There are amazing support people out there doing amazing work. Um, I'm going to miss some here, and I apologize for that. But off the top of my head... Um, First, you got BIC and you got Alliance. I love those groups. I work with them all the time. BIC is Benzodiazepine Information Coalition. It's at benzoinfo.com. The Alliance for Benzodiazepine Best Practices is at benzoreform.org. If you've never been there, please check out those organizations. They are solid. They do a lot of what I do. They provide information. They provide support. They provide research. Um, in fact, I work with... Every week, I am meeting multiple times with people from both these organizations in projects that we're working on together. Um, we do this all the time. That's where a lot of my time is. And we're getting a lot done. We're creating peer training programs. We've created CMEs, Continuing med Medical Education, to help educate doctors. Um, a lot of those groups, and I'm not involved in these, are working with the FDA and and federal agencies here in the U.S. and other places to help change, you know, the rules. And, and this is how that FDA ruling in 20, uh, the FDA boxed warning update came out in 2020 was part of some of this advocacy from these groups. And they're excellent information. Please tune in and, and check those out. And then there's all the support groups out there. You got Baylissa Frederick, who has been doing this forever. Check out her at mccare.org. Um, she is still rock solid, amazing. Just love her to death. You got Jennifer Lee, same thing. Been doing this stuff for a long time. Runs a great group. Um, you know, she's awesome. Please check her out. And, um, oh, I'm going to forget her site. Oh, Withdrawal Hell. I'm not going to forget. So please just Google it. Jennifer Lee. If you type in Jennifer Lee, L-E-I-G-H, benzos or benzodiazepines, you're going to find it. And I will put a link in the show notes. Sorry, I'm sitting on the porch and I don't have anything to look up here for me. Um, and then you got other ones like um, Benzo Warrior, great group that we've started working with more and more over the past year through the Benzo Action Work Group. Um, really helpful. You got Barb and Lisa there who are running a great show. They got online support groups. They're entirely free right now. They may not always stay that way. I don't know what they're planning on doing, but right now they're totally free. Please check them out. That's great support that they're providing. Um, you got other coaches out there that are doing all kinds of work. Who I'm missing, you know, you got other podcasters. Geraldine Burns, of course, has been doing her podcast from way back when. I think she's still in it. She might be in a semi-hiatus, but she's produced some great stuff. You got other podcasts and um, interviews from all kinds of people. You got Angie. Oh, you got to talk about Angela Peacock. She's, I just saw her. She was at my house a couple, a couple of weeks ago. She stops by periodically and we hang out and grab food and, and do some projects together. She's amazing. Um, especially if you have military experience, she's awesome with veterans. That's her background. She's a veteran and she understands that. If that's a, something for you, go, please go check out Angie. And if it's not, she's just really good with general psychiatric withdrawal. So it doesn't have to be just benzodiazepines. She works with the whole gamut. Um, but really solid, just a, an amazing woman. You, you, you got to check her out. And 
I can keep going on and on and on about the people, and I'm always going to support them, especially the people that just, you know, still have that. We have the generally, we all have the same principles about slow taper, about dependence, not addiction, about, you know, all the same things. We have these same general Ashton based, is probably the word to use it, Ashton based um, philosophy of approaching this. And they're just amazing. So please, you know, Check out our show notes. I'll put some of those links in there. Check out these resources. They're incredible. But there is so much help out there today. And there's tons of books. So many people have written amazing books. And um, other YouTube channels. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there. And I, some of these have thousands of, you know, my YouTube channel is just about to hit a thousand. But there's many out there who have already had, you know, two, three, four thousand subscribers on their YouTube channel. Because that's all they do. I spend... Only 5-10% of my time on my YouTube channel. The rest of my time's on everything else. And I know I'm rambling. But I want to say to T and to other people like T that there's... that you got this. Okay? You are going to be okay. This I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And and for you, maybe it will be. For some people, they come off these drugs with no problem. Um, but for, for other people, it can be a difficulty and for some people that can last for a while but if you take it easy learn about what's going on get a good support system get a good doctor behind you and take your time you can do this you really can do this and that's the message I really wanted to say there it's so easy just to talk to you all I'm just I'm already at 30 minutes now I'm looking at the my the countdown timer on my little hand recorder. I got my little, this little Zoom recorder. I love this thing. And it's in my hand, and I'm just chatting, sitting out on the porch, enjoying the stream and the, the cloudy weather and everything, and and just chatting with you, and I love doing that. That's I miss that when I've not done the podcast lately. And I think sometimes I try to put too much, I put, try to put too much into these. My wife, oh my God, constantly tells me, how come this one's an hour long again? Because I keep saying I'm going to do a 30-minute podcast or a 20-minute or or 25-minute, and I don't think I've ever reached that <laughs> that limit. I always wind up doing at least an hour, and once I do an hour, then I'd run two edit, I'd run two passes editing this thing, um, and so each one of those is longer, and that's what turns it into a. It's it's basically two days for me to record an average podcast. That's a lot of time out of a month. And I think it's because I put too much, I'm trying to do it differently, and I'm trying to reduce that workload so I can put out more of these, and I'm, I'm getting there. And they may not be as polished, but I'm going to put them out more often, just maybe shorter, less polished, and more often. And I think most of you have told me that that's what you'd like to see, and I'm with you, and we're getting there. So, In fact, um, not only is this podcast still still going strong, been so free, it's not going anywhere, every month coming out, but I'm planning on starting another podcast through our channel. It's going to be more focused on life skills and anxiety. A lot of stuff we've covered here, but this way I can focus mostly on that, and that's also for people struggling with just anxiety. You know, one of the things that I do want to touch on real quick is the blog. For those who are only listening to the podcast um, and you want to know more updates of what's going on, please go onto our website and subscribe to our mailing list because that's where you're going to get notices of our blog. I still post on our blog two to three times a week. Now that Doreen and others are coming on board, one of the first things Doreen's going to do is start writing for our blog. I am really excited. She's got amazing ideas to start writing about, and those are going to be coming out probably next week. And so if you subscribe to our mailing list, which right now we have about 500 people subscribed and it's growing rapidly and I'm so grateful for everybody that signed on. You will be notified anytime a new blog post, a new podcast post, other updates we're posting, anything about the site, you will get a quick email and um, you can click on it if you want to learn more. It's that simple. Um, you can always unsubscribe anytime you like, but it's there. And while you're there, if you want to sign up and be part of our online community, which right now there's nothing to see, but it's coming in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> but while you're there, you can subscribe. You can create your own page, put your own picture up. You can do all that kind of stuff and log in. That's set up for you. So um, if you look in the upper right corner of our website at easinganxiety.com, you might see a login or something like that or a picture or whatever. That's a place where you can click on, and that will allow you to create an account on our site. 
that's where all our new stuff is going to first. So please um, check that out, as I mentioned before. So um, if you're on, on, online, you're going to see that. And I don't know if that's where I was going, was it? <laughs> this is the part where D loses focus sometimes. The problem with me and easing anxiety is that I never run out of ideas. Instead, I'm trying to figure out how to do the 10% of the ideas that I actually have time to do. <laughs> Um, the other 90% I'm not getting done, and that's one of the reasons why I'm building a team. One of the reasons we're building the community and a paid community so we can start bringing some revenue in, so we can start maybe even paying some people for doing coaching on our site, which is one of the things we're doing. Um, and we can start building out that infrastructure. And I'm, this is the exciting thing. And one of the things we're doing is anybody on our site that's providing cut coaching or running the group, um, they are going to have a certificate. We have created through the Benzodiazepine Action Work Group, as you know, and this is the work group through the Colorado Consortium that Vic's a member of, Alliance is a member of, and many of those people were involved in creating this training program. But we have created the Benzo Peer Training, um, Benzodiazepine Peer Training or um, online course. And we already had our first paid course in Colorado. And we have a pool of about six lived experience instructors. Each one of these classes is taught courses is taught by one lived experience, somebody with benzodiazepine lived experience, and one um, recovery coach trainer, and from Choices Training or other similar organizations. Thank you, Colorado Consortium. This is the Colorado Consortium for Prescription Drug Abuse Prevention, who is the sponsor of the Benzodiazepine Action Work Group. Um, so uh, if you're interested in that, please check it out. If you want to give back and you would think maybe the way to give back is through coaching or through... Um, you know, work in the Benzo community or something like this. This is the perfect course for it. That's what we designed it for, okay? Um, it's both for recovery coaches that are out there who know nothing about Benzos, and it's also for um, individuals with lived experience on benzodiazepines who want to do more formal coaching, okay? On our site, Easing Anxiety, as we're launching our community and we're going to have some coaching on there, once we do that, that will be the requirement. That will be one of the requirements to be a coach on our site. Everybody needs to have had that course and be certified. We're going to be the first site that has fully certified coaches with that course on there. So I'm excited about that. And I think that's a great way to start. And that gives them some background and some experience. Now, many of these also have, many of these individuals also have counseling degrees. So some of our coaches, you know, they're, they're from all over the place. And and we're just providing an infrastructure and a community where they can provide coaching. And you can go and choose what coach you want or which group you want to belong to. This is all coming in our site, and I'm so excited about it. So um, so please, you know, stay tuned. If you, if you subscribe to our mailing list, you'll know more about that. I feel like this is becoming this big advertisement. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think it's my own excitement of what we're doing here that's coming out. And I don't mean to sound like a used car salesman. I'm sorry if I do. I feel like I've been spending, oh God, when I started writing the book was what, maybe seven years ago? I published it five years ago. Website came out four and a half years, I mean, podcast and website came out, podcast came out four and a half years ago. All of that was leading up to this, this easing anxiety community. And I am excited about it. And I am excited to hopefully get you all involved in it. I'm excited to have feedback for people, support for people, a place for people to go and hang out where they know they're going to get good information for the most part, where they're going to have, be able to talk to other people, they're going to be able to talk to coaches, they're going to be able to get support, be parts of groups, have live events, all that kind of stuff. And that is coming soon. So anyway, I hope you'll, I hope you'll tune in and get, um, learn more about it. But for people like T and others, there's so much going on. And, and we're just one site. We are just one site. As I mentioned before, you have all the others out there like you know, Angie's site at apcockconsulting.com. I don't think I mentioned her site website before. Benzo Warriors at benzowarrior.com. Um, and everybody else. You got Inner Compass, the Withdrawal Project out there. You got great podcasts and coaches and stuff so please go looking for what you want we're setting up our resources page to have more and more 
options on there. You can find out some of those people in our resources. And we'll keep working with them. I'm going to guest post and guest um, and be a guest on some of their sites as we've done in the past. And I'm going to have them over on our site writing blogs and different things just to help promote what they do and what we do, but also just to give you options. So T and other people, that's what we're here for is to give you options. Okay? Because we want you to have what you need to help get through this because this is manageable. This is doable. You got this. You really do. You got this. Yes, this is really hard on some people. But that is also the minority of people. But even if that minority is you, and you're out there struggling in the middle of lengthy bind, which is benzo withdrawal, which is protracted benzo withdrawal, for those who aren't familiar with the word bind, which I might talk about here in a second, but for those of you that are struggling with it, it gets better. We all, I, almost everybody I've talked to that I call, you know, it's improved over time. We improve over time. We don't know for sure if some of this is per, not permanent or not. I can't say that because I'm not going to lie to you. But I have seen people heal completely after 10 years. Many have healed after one year. Many have healed after a few months. It just depends on the person. Most heal in a much shorter period of time. And we're that minority group of people, for many of us, who it, fortunately, for some reason, it just takes longer, and I'm one of those. Real quick, I do want to mention BIND, because I was starting to mention that before. For those who don't know, BIND just stands for benzodiazepine-induced neurological dysfunction. It's a new term for the protracted state of benzo withdrawal, or that, that state that happens after acute withdrawal. And it's a, it's, it's a definition for all that stuff we're going through. We just got the papers published. All this has happened in the last couple of months. If you've not been on the podcast, it's been exciting around here. That's another reason why we haven't been on as much. And we had the Bind Roundtable with all the different researchers, um, Dr. Peter Martin and Dr. Reed Finlayson from um, Vanderbilt, Dr. Alexis Ritvo from the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Center, um, Dr. Christy Huff from Benzodiazepine Information Coalition, Bernie Silvernail from the Alliance for Benzodiazepine Pest Practices, and myself, we're all on that research team. And um, been put, we put out three papers. That third paper had buying come out. There was this huge other team of people that defined it, and I was part of that team, but there was like 23 different doctors and lived experience people that defined the term bind. It's exciting to get that out there, and we've been picked up all over the place. Our bind research has been picked up, and I was working with a writer out of Psychology Today, um, Christopher Lane. He's, he was amazing, and he's covered our article. Thank you for all the coverage you've done on it. He's really been great at helping to cover the issues related to benzodiazepines. Um, we were covered in Forbes. We've been covered on a lot of different nodes. We even got a, um, rec a on different podcasts. And, I mean, it was just all over the place. So we got a lot of good coverage. And it's those types of things that start to make a difference. But we can't let up. we got to keep, keep that term out there, keep pushing forward. The next stage is for us to be more recognized within doctor's offices insurance companies so they recognize bind as a specific condition so that we can start to get people covered for disability people covered by insurance for this so we recognize that we are working on that if that's something going on with you right now don't worry that is our focus and we are trying to get that more recognized so doctors know what it is when they see it so insurance companies will start to cover it we're hoping so that employers will start to cover it with disability as they do any other medical condition or disease. So, it's exciting stuff. Oh, I've talked about the benzo community. I've talked about all kinds of stuff. You know, here at Easing Anxiety, I wanted to mention one more thing. God, I, I'm not going to sound like an advertisement again. I hope not, but I'm not. I, this is more a one-on-one -on -one in-person thing I just want to mention. Um, what our approach is, and one of the things that Doreen and I have been working on and others have been working on is kind of figuring out our principles of what we stand for, how we, what our take is on that. Because when you try to figure out where you want to go for your support group or your coaching or your information, that's, that's a factor, you know. What, what are their principles? What are they focused on? And one of the things that I've evolved here at Easing Anxiety and through the Benzo, Benzo Free and the Benzo Free podcast 
for those of you who listen to me a while, you know where I stand on most things because, I mean, re not, not politics. I'm not talking that here. I'm talking related to benzo withdrawal. Um, but you know kind of where I stand on that stuff. And, and what I've seen, and I've worked with hundreds of people directly through the podcast who have been going through this. And like I said before, helping manage the anxiety, helping create a stable mindset, helping to find that mental place for us to be to get through this, I think is where we can spend, where, where, where our energy is best spent, okay? Um, I just published a blog post on the five stages of grief going through um, BIND. And I think it's very relevant. Now, I got a little pushback on a comment, which I welcome. Um, and I wrote back to that person. I haven't heard back since I wrote back to that person. But, hey, it's not for everybody. But from what I've seen, it seems to be a path that many have taken. Um, the whole stages of denial. What is it again? Denial. Um, anger, I'm getting the wrong, wrong way, but it's denial, anger, bargaining, um, depression, and acceptance. I think that's the road. Yeah, I think that's the road. So acceptance we talk about all the time, but we hadn't really talked about those other ones leading up to it. But finding that acceptance has been so important. And, um, and helping people understand bind and helping understand what's going on has been key. And so at Easing Anxiety, we're coming at it from the side of building your team's important, having people to help you is important, but they can't do this for you. So I don't know. There's a term that I came up with, and um, I don't know if it'll stick. We might change it. But right now, there's a term called the compassionate responsibility, which is kind of our my approach. And what I say is that compassionate from the standpoint of I'm not about to tell you what's going on is not real. I am not about to tell you this isn't severe. I'm not about to downplay your condition. I feel for you. I understand what you're going through, and it can suck. You're not going to get denials from me. You're not going to get disbelief from me. Nothing like that. Not here. We understand. This is really hard and can be really hard for some people. That's the compassion side of it. We've been there. Almost everybody that works with me here has been there, understands it, can relate to it, and has compassion for where you are. That's the compassionate side. The responsibility side is this. While at times we're going to blame everybody else for what happened, including the doctors, the pharmaceutical companies, and trust me, I'm not saying that it's not right <laughs> many times because some doctors have behaved horribly regarding this and pharmaceutical companies have behaved. Hey, I'm, I'm with you on that. But in the end, there is only one person that can help you heal, and that's you. That's the responsibility part. It's to move past the blame and moved into taking responsibility for your recovery. Not saying you caused it. I'm, I'm not saying you did. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know each person's history. Um, maybe you, maybe you, you know, maybe you were seeking these drugs and you went. I mean, I don't know. But most of us did. Most of us were prescribed it. Most of us were never warned. Most of us, that's not the case. Okay. But at some point we have to move into the place of taking responsibility for our actions, responsibility for our own recovery, and responsibility for our own healing. That's what I've seen work. And so for me, it's having compassion for all we've gone through and understanding it and accepting it and saying, yes, I see you. I know what you're going through. I know what you've been through to a degree. Your story's different than mine, but I know what you've been through to a degree. I'm here to help. We get it. We get it. And the other part is, but you're the only one that can get through this. You're the only one that can make this work. You're the only one who can pull you through this. And we're also here to help you with that. That's what I think of as compassionate responsibility. I don't know, <laughs> but I like it. It's just what I've seen over time working with hundreds of people. It's what I've started to you know, see in these patterns that that seems to work. When you find acceptance, when you're able to move past the anger, and the anger is valid. The frustration is valid. The blame's valid. It's not that that's not valid. But it's that that's not a friend 
to healing. So at some point, we have to move past the anger stage. We have to move past the blame, through the past the bargaining, past the depression, and say, okay, this happened to me. How do I get through it? And how do I make the most of this difficult situation? And that's what I want our site to help people do. So if that sounds good to you and that sounds like a good plan and that sounds like it might work, hey, maybe we're the place for you. If it's not, please still come to us. I would be happy to find other people that might help you with different philosophies and different structures of how to deal with anxiety and how to deal with um, the complications of anxiety medication. Oh, so much to talk about. <laughs> I didn't get to your comments, I'm sorry, although I did mention a couple comments here of ones I've just seen recently from Wendy and from T and Graham and other ones. Um, but that was just off the top of my head because I just read those. But I am seeing your comments. Please don't stop writing in. Please don't stop commenting. Even though I can't reply to every one of them, I see them and they mean the world to me, so please don't stop. And I want to close this out with just saying, I ask you how you're doing. I usually open with that, but right now I want to close it out because that's where I'm at. And it's just, oh, this is this has been one of those live ones. I have not paused this recorder once. I have not, I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to go and listen to it, mark a few chapters, toss in my opening song, toss in um, my disclaimer, which I'll, I'll break for here in a second. But it's just been... A thought I have a little piece of paper next to me a little tiny piece of paper with like um, eight bullets on it of things to talk about it says like you know live recording I'm on the patio health um, bind <laughs> you know <laughs> benzo community new format that's all I have so that's been the script for today this has been raw it's D unscripted maybe that's what I call it is a D unscripted maybe that's my new podcast is D unscripted because I love doing this and um, I want to close with this because I actually said this in the first version <laughs> that I didn't record um, or didn't record um, or didn't, the machine didn't record. But this is what I vision is right now I am on my patio and it's a, it's a decent sized patio. It's room for, you know, a few different tables here and everything. And, um, but sitting on the patio, feet up on the table and um, relaxed. And what I want right now, what I'm visualizing that makes me just grin inside is that there's 10 of you, 15 of you on this patio with me right now. And we're all hanging out here after a conference or, you know, or a group or something. And we're just friends and um, we're sipping lemonade. You know, if the sugar's too much for you, we're sipping tea, decaffeinated. Um, we're, just, we're just chilling out face to face friends, talking about what we've been through, talking about everything else in our life, talking about our kids, about our parents, about the loves in our lives, just sharing our lives with each other. And, and smiling because of the success we are having because we're getting through this together. And I want that. I want you all here on that patio with me. And I hope you'll grace me one day of doing that. And part of that is I want to start meeting people face to face. And I want to get out there and I want to start having meetings. And I want to start, you know, go traveling around the country. You know me, I love my road trips. But I want those road trips to be around a purpose of making this worth with anxiety. So part of that is going to be we're going to get out there. And we're going to come, come and start to see people and say hi. Virtual is great. I love the online community, but I'm still a face-to-face -face teacher and um, just kind of person. I, I, was, I taught at college. I taught other places. And what I loved was I just loved the face-to-face. -face. I don't think I could teach today if it's entirely virtual, although I kind of do that with the podcast and with our site. But I still crave for that that intimate connection with people. That's just who I am. I love that. And that's one of the things I get from the podcast is those conversations with you, that honesty with you, that intimacy with you, that we, you know, dealing with, it's hard to find more intimacy that somebody going through life altering, challenging experience like Bind. 
I mean, this hits us to the core and makes us extremely vulnerable. And that means that we're greeting each other on a different playing field. And I've said that before. One of the things I love about the podcast is I meet all the different people who listen to the podcast with almost zero pretext. All I know is that they're a benzo person. I don't know the color of their skin. I sometimes don't know the country they're from. I sometimes don't know their gender. I mean, there's a lot of things I don't know. And I'm just meeting people without your political beliefs. I don't know. And I don't care. I'm meeting the real you. I'm meeting the inner core you because this tears us down to our core. This is who we are. And that's another, I believe, foundation and principle of this site is to keep that type of community where we are talking on a real level to each other about reality and what life's like and how we get through it and how we deal with it. And I want to build on that, and I think we can. And you all are building on that with me, and you've got me here, and I appreciate that. And I think we've built something, and we're building something good. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for going... Oh, wow, that suddenly hit me. I got emotional. Um, I want to thank you for being on this journey with me. I want to thank you for your love and support. I want to thank you for just everything you've done to get us to this stage. I never would be here without everybody's feedback and questions and comments and support and all that goes into that. Thanks for that. Let me break really quickly for our disclaimer and I'll come back and close it out with y'all. Thanks. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice in any way. The host of this podcast is not a medical professional, nor is he engaged in rendering medical, health, or psychological advice, nor any other kind of personal professional services. The views and opinions expressed by our listeners and interview guests on this podcast, whether read from textual submissions or presented in their own voice, do not necessarily reflect those of the Benzo Free Podcast or of its host. Withdrawal tapering or any other change in dosage of benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepines, or any other prescription drugs should only be done under the direct supervision of a licensed physician. And that closes out this episode of the Benzo Free Podcast. Please tune in next month for episode 126, although we might still pop something out before then. Um, and, of course, I'm going to try to get another podcast up and running here in the next month or so. Other things coming out to the site. So please, if you get a chance, um, sign on for our mailing list so you can follow what we're doing. I hope everybody out there is doing okay. I hope if today's a bad day that tomorrow's a good one. I hope you all will come and join me on the patio here and just relax, hang out with some friends, sip some lemonade, and know that you're not alone in this world. Loneliness is an epidemic right now in the world. And it doesn't have to be. We can be there for each other. If anything, Bind has taught me, and many of you, we can be there for each other. You've been there for me, and for that I am grateful. Keep calm, taper slowly, and take care of yourself. I will see you next time.